strategies, trying to deselect sperm with DNA fragmentation in the lab. But uh, there's also interest in using testicular sperm that has been shown by Greco in 2005 and also Sakas and Alvarez later on in small, uh, small trials, a uh, few patients included in an in attempt to use the stipulous sperm compared to ejaculated sperm in men, especially couples with repeat IVF failures. Well, given this uh, initial interest, uh, more research has been done related to the use of testicular sperm in ICSI. However, when you go for the clinical decision to use sperm retrieval, in non-azospermic uh, non man, it's a completely different story. Because if you have an azospermic patient, then the uh, procedure is well, let's say, supported. But now we are talking about non-azospermic man, and we have risks related to sperm retrieval. Risks are related to complications, in surgical complications, for instance. There has been some data indicating that a high, uh, the testicular sperm could have higher aneuploidy rates. And also, there is a, a meta systematic review and meta-analysis published in fertility sterility recently, in which the authors compared testicular sperm with ejaculated sperm for men with cryptozoospermia, and they could not find a beneficial effect of testicular sperm. So I think there's a, uh, our purpose in this study was to clarify the clinical use of testicular sperm for ICSI in preference over ejaculated sperm in a specific population of men with high sperm DNA fragmentation in semen. So our study question is like that, and we wanted to use a, a specific group of men. So for that, we performed the PRISMA systematic review and meta-analysis. We searched the major database, and they are, we included studies published till December 2016. Uh, our meta-analysis, our population was like that. We were interested in men, non-azospermic non men, with confirmed high DNA <coughs> fragmentation semen that they uh, used testicular sperm one group, another group, ejaculated sperm. We also uh, included studies in which the authors compared sperm DNA fragmentation levels between testicular and ejaculated sperm, regardless of having ICSI data. So the outcome measures are, are shown in the slide. We have sperm DNA fragmentation rate in ejaculated testicular sperm, fertilization rates, pregnancy outcomes per embryo transfer, clinical and live birth rates, and also miscarriage rates. So our meta-analysis, we use it both fixed and the uh, random effect models. And the, uh, to report results, we use see odds ratio for data like fertilization rates and pregnancy outcomes, and mean difference for uh, sperm DNA fragmentation rates comparing testicular and ejaculated sperm. So we uh, initially identified more than 100 studies, but after screening the studies and the, uh, assessing eligibility, we could include seven studies in our systematic review and meta-analysis. These studies are listed here, and they, as you can see, we have studies published since 2005, less study in 2016, the design, as you may see, they are mostly uh, observational studies. We could not find a randomized control trial among all studies uh, searched in the literature. Uh, as far as the population is concerned, you can see that uh, it's mixed uh, between studies looking at uh, couples with failed IVF, general population of infertile men, and mixed population of failed IVF and also infertile men. Uh, number of patients, it's quite valuable, but we have two studies in the literature uh, actually as, uh, including a uh, fairly uh, good number of patients. Next is the uh, test for sperm DNA fragmentation assessment. Most studies use a tunnel, and uh, as you can see, the cutoff point used to discriminate patients with high DNA fragmentation or a normal, let's say, DNA fragmentation was around 30 for most of the studies identified. Some studies reported uh, DNA fragmentation rates in the same patient in ejaculate and testicular uh, specimens, 
And in two of these studies, they also reported ICSI data. Two studies did not report paired sperm DNA fragmentation rate between the stippler and the ejaculated sperm, but, but they did report ICSI outcomes. So then, uh, if we can summarize, our uh, studies, we included more than 500 ICSI cycles, more than 3,000 injected oocytes, and for about 150 patients, they have, we have the um, sperm DNA fragmentation results between uh, ejaculated and testicular sperm in the same patient. So going for the uh, also analysis, the risk of bias, we use the Robbins Y2 because all of the studies were non-randomized. And uh, we can see that most of the studies, except one, were uh, deemed as having overall moderate risk of bias. Now let's say, uh, jump to the results. When we compare paired sperm DNA fragmentation rates between testicular and ejaculated sperm, so means in the same manner, they provided a sample, and then uh, the doctor took sperm from the test pole, sperm retrieval, and they compared sperm DNA fragmentation rates in the same patient ejaculated in testicular sperm. It was a, a clear uh, difference uh, in the mean difference of sperm DNA fragmentation favoring testicular sperm. Means that the mean difference was about 25% less DNA fragmentation in testicular sperm compared with the ejaculated sperm. However, because the statistical heterogeneity was high, we decided to do a subgroup analysis just including uh, uh, studies looking at sperm uh, DNA fragmentation assay. And because of four or five studies using tunnel, we then uh, subgroup all studies using tunnel, as you can see in the first plot. And again, results were supportive of statistically significant lower sperm DNA fragmentation with testicular sperm compared with the ejaculated sperm. And now the statistical heterogeneity was very low. So indicating that the reason for high heterogeneity in the previous forest plot was related to sperm DNA fragmentation method. Second point was a fertilization rate. As you can see, we could not find a, a statistical uh, a significant difference between fertilization rate between ejaculate and testicular sperm. However, there was a trend to lower fertilization rate using testicular sperm. Again, Excuse me, can you jump to the conclusions now? Yes, okay. I just showed the, uh, the, the results for the, for the clinical pregnancy rate that was again in favor of a testicular sperm. And then again, the miscarriage rates showing that results were in favor of a uh, testicular sperm, lower miscarriage rates, and live birth rates again in favor of a uh, testicular sperm. So uh, the summary of the results, uh, this uh, meta-analysis using mostly observational studies we could see that we got lower sperm DNA fragmentation rates in testicular sperm, and also the re reproductive outcomes using ICSI was supportive of using testicular sperm in men with high DNA fragmentation in semen. Thank you very much.